Hi guys, my name is Rajan, also known as The Dentist Rajan. If you're new around here, I'm a dental student at King's College London. Now, today's video is all gonna be about textbook techniques. I'm gonna take you through the steps that changed my textbook revision strategy, which took me from a D in the autumn term when I, just, when I did my first A-level mock to an A in the summer, which helped me get into dental school. All of these techniques are gonna be backed up by evidence, as you'll see. And I really hope this change to the technique that you use to textbook revising can help improve your grades like they did mine. So taking a quick trip down memory lane, I got a B in my AS level for biology and then a D in my first mock in the autumn term uh, in my last year of school in December. And this all pointed to me really struggling uh, in my summer A levels and perhaps not being able to get into dental school. And I think this is mainly because I never actually thought, how am I gonna revise from a textbook? I just use the same standard techniques as you guys probably do. Now, I always struggled with biology. I think I found it the hardest out of all my subjects purely because of the amount of content that you had to learn. There was so much content and this meant that you had to put so much time in to actually revise. And this meant that there was even more attention or that there, there needs to be more attention put on how you actually use that time. So let's quickly discuss the textbook technique that I was using previously. So what I would do if we take a chapter is I would reread the chapter over and over again. I would use loads of highlighting to just, you know, highlight the important points. I would also write notes for all the important points that I thought I should take out from that. That chapter. Because I didn't have a photographic memory, I just assumed, you know, that because I can't look at it and learn it once by, by just reading it once, then it made more sense for me to read it over and over again until it went into my head. So I would highlight loads, and once I got to the end of the chapter, I would just try, spend so much time writing all these notes out for that specific chapter. And these techniques took ages, and not only did they take such a long time, but as these studies show, they were also incredibly ineffective. I won't go into the studies in more detail, I'll leave them in the description if you guys want to go and check it out. But all these three techniques of rereading, of highlighting and of writing notes for textbooks have all been proven to be ineffective. And by spending so much time writing notes and rereading and all this kind of stuff, it meant that by the time the exam came out, I didn't actually understand the content. I'd just written it out a few times, maybe a couple of things had gone in. But by the time the exam came round, it was really the first time I was trying to recall all that information. Not too much of it was engraved in my brain. And this was the big problem. I was never able to understand my notes. Understanding and remembering are two different things. You can't remember bulk information for a long period of time unless you understand it and because I wasn't taking the time to actually try and understand the notes that I was making it meant that by the time the exam came around I didn't really understand what I was writing down on the piece of paper and therefore didn't necessarily get the answer right or didn't remember what the right answer was so then I hired a private tutor I hired a private tutor in December because I was like oh my goodness I need to get into dental school I want to do really well this money is going to mean absolutely nothing when I eventually graduate so for me it was completely the right decision and she taught me a really effective way to revise from textbooks, one that had never been explained to me before and one that I'll explain to you today. And it's actually backed up by an academic called Matt DeMaio, who has been talking about study techniques for over 40 years. Now, once we go through all these steps, you might think, oh my goodness, this is so much to do for just one chapter that I have to revise. But what these steps are gonna do is they're gonna allow you to learn and understand all the information by just reading the chapter once, as opposed to reading it three, four, five times, which you may have to do usually, or which you, may, you might be doing usually which is what I was doing before I learned this technique. And after this technique, I was just able to read the chapter once and understand all the information and able to recall it. And therefore, overall, this takes way less time than having to read the chapter over and over and over again. So let's say we're revising a chapter, right? And let's say this chapter that we're revising today, as you can see, is going to be on photosynthesis. The first thing that we're going to do is actually read the chapter objectives. And would you believe that this specific textbook doesn't have any, but it has rather prior knowledge requirements. But most textbooks do have objectives. This will get your brain just thinking about what's actually to come. Then what we're gonna do next, um, having read the objectives, is just flip through each page. That's all we're gonna do. We're not gonna read the page in any depth, but we're just gonna flick over it. Maybe have a look at some of the pictures and program in your head what it is you're gonna be overlooking over the next maybe half an hour to hour. So in this case, I'm thinking we're gonna be having a look at chlorophyll. Uh, we're going to be having a look at photosynthesis in more detail, um, perhaps the photosynthesis reactions and specific pathways, um, the reactions here in a bit more detail, okay? Uh, and we're also going to be looking at the factors that are going to be affecting the rate of these reactions. We don't need to read it, okay? We're just, uh, you know, having an understanding of what it is that we're going to be reading about. How long is the chapter? How much information is the chapter? How long is it going to take, you know, for you to actually absorb perhaps this information? So now we get to the end of the chapter, okay, and without having read anything, we come across these chapter questions. Read these. What these questions are, it's, it's the example telling you, this is what I want you to learn from this chapter. 
And once you read this chapter, these are the points that we expect you to know inside out, potentially which might come up in the exam. So it's an absolute no brainer to definitely be reading these questions. And what's essential to understand is by reading these questions before you actually go through the chapter, it means that you've got an idea in your head when you do go through the chapter of what you need to pay attention to, what you're trying to look for. So I know here that I wanna pay attention to pigments, uh, to chromatography, to uh, chlorophyll mechanisms. Uh, some more stuff on pigments, photosynthesis pathways, mitochondria, and chloroplast structure. Now I know that these areas are essential parts of the chapter that I need to pay attention to. Right, so let's go back now to the start of the chapter. So let's summarize really quickly. We've had a look at the objectives, we flicked through the chapter really quickly, and we've then had a look at what questions the exam board have provided at the end of the chapter to see what they think we should be taking out of this specific section. Now we're going to scroll through the chapter again, but we're not going to be reading it in full detail. We're going to be doing three things. OK, the first thing that we're going to do, if we just take it paragraph by paragraph, is read the first line of the paragraph. What this is going to do is it's going to give you an introduction to what that paragraph is going to be about. So what that section of the chapter is going to be about. So if we take this first chapter, photosynthetic, pig, photosynthetic pigment, sorry, the purpose of photosynthetic pigments is to absorb light energy and convert it into chemical energy. Great, now we know what this paragraph is about. And now we're already recalling in the back of our mind, oh, there were some questions about pigment, so maybe I need to pay attention during this chapter. The second thing that we're gonna do is have a look at all the bold print in the paragraph. In this case, it's blueprint, not bold print, but obviously they're synonymous. Why are we doing this? Well, the bold print is what the author is trying to tell us is incredibly important, okay? It's, if they got you to take anything away from that paragraph, it was that specific term or line. So we're having a look here and we're looking at accessory pigments. Okay, I remember accessory pigments was one of the answers to one of the questions. So this is quite important. Now I just know in my head that accessory pigments is an important term. And the third thing that you're gonna do is simply read the last sentence of the paragraph. Okay, so some common photosynthetic pigments are listed in table 2.1 and we'll just have a look at the table then. Okay, so these are the three things that I want you to do whilst going through each chapter. The first line, the bold print, the last line. So why have we fit through the pages? Why have we read the end questions? And why have we just done that three-step technique? Well, it's all to create a map in your head for your brain. Instead of just starting from the first sentence and reading, reading the paragraph and reading the chapters all the way through, now we're creating a map in our head that our brain has already dotted out. With the basic structure of the chapter already sorted in our head, now all we have to do is fill in the gap. And this is so much more effective than just reading everything for the first time and hoping to memorize it. However, whilst reading this chapter, I would advise one more technique. And that is a learning technique called Active Recall. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard about it. There's been a lot of videos made on Active Recall. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. But what Active Recall involves is you constantly recalling the information that you've just learned. So rather than the exam being the first time where you actually actively try and recall the information that you've learned, Active Recall involves doing this at far more consistent rates. So the most effective Active Recall technique for me is testing whether I actually understand the information. Okay, and what I would do is I would close the textbook, okay, and I would actually try to explain to myself in a mirror what I've just learned. Obviously, if you have someone else there, you can explain to someone else, but what I like to do is just pretend I'm on a talk show or something, whatever it is, and actually try and explain the information to myself. I'd usually do this after a whole chapter, but if a chapter was particularly long or there was a paragraph that was particularly challenging, then I might do it after that specific small section. So in this case, the chapter is about 15 pages, I think, so that's rather long. So what I might do in this case is revise everything on pigments, revise everything on chlorophyll, and try and explain that to test if I actually understand the information before then going on to photosynthesis and having a look at all the light dependent reactions, the independent light reactions, and then I'd close the textbook and actively try and recall that again. So what I would advise is trying to incorporate the active recall technique into your final reading of the chapter. Whether you want to do all that active recall at the end of the chapter is your choice, or whether you want to do it from section to section is another choice. But what this means is that once you've completed that active recall, you've then proven to yourself that you do understand the information. And that will go a long way in holding that information in your brain for a period of time. 
So if you don't want to be weird like me and use the active recall technique of explaining everything to myself, you can use different active recall techniques such as writing notes out at the end of the chapter, which might take long. Make sure you close the textbook when you're writing those notes out just to make sure that you're not cheating. And also you could use flashcards. But as I mentioned, there are loads of more active recall techniques and I can talk about a lot of them in a lot more detail. If you want me to just leave it in a comment below. If these techniques are as effective for you as they were for me, then you'll only need to read the chapter once and you'll be able to hold that information for a long period of time. What I would advise going forward is then you do consistently actively recall all that information maybe once a week of what you've learned but that's a conversation for another time as I said if you want to hear more about active recall leave it in the comments below. I've been the Dentist Raj I hope these textbook tips help and I'll see you guys next time.